Hey, Stefan. I think it's Stefan. Yeah, that's how it's spelled. I'm from America. I'm sorry. Don't know how to pronounce your name. I think that's right. Anyways, that's a lot of snow. Seriously gnarly. Okay, uh, let's jump into it. What were you worried about? There you are. Okay, you think there's a lot of fix. Biggest issues are not using momentum from the brace. Interesting. And your disc is not traveling in a straight line. Accurate. You can fix that. At least make you aware of why it's happening. Um, yeah, so dip, flare and dip in the disc. And the left side of your body is just an anchor. Yeah, cool. Good observation. Um, I would agree. So let's take a look at it. Um, thank you for putting stuff on YouTube. That is awesome. For some reason, the second one uploaded as a short, which is less awesome, but that's not your fault. That's just YouTube being dumb. So nice, nice controlled short X step. I really like that. but I don't really like this. <clears throat> so look at your your point of ground contact. And then like if I exaggerate and go to the point of your hip, that line is tipping forward a lot. But if I'm nice and go to your center of gravity, <clears throat> that line is still tipping forward too much, right? This way. And like you do have to tip forward, but I'm, I'm reasonably certain that your hips are getting too far ahead here. So we're just starting with the lower body first. We'll look at the arm later. So I, I like your foot placement for the most part. This, this, this angle is probably fine. I usually tell people to be closer to to 90 um, but what you're missing here is the reason this leg is turning into an anchor is because you're still pushing off of the ground which you should be doing to some extent it's not a big explosive push it's just a little gliding into your brace push but this the leg is straight and it actually needs to be tipped in so there's there's a concept I've been throwing around recently um, and I call it long leg, short leg, or short leg, long leg, depending on which one you're doing. But here, you definitely have short leg, long leg, right? So I'm exaggerating, and I do this one to your toe, but this this makes the idea more clear. So there's there's not really much bend in your rear leg. There may be some. You can't see it because we're looking at your knee straight on, but there's it looks like there's more bend in your front. So this is why your leg feels like an anchor because you're leaving it behind you. <clears throat> and then when your hips go to rotate, when this rear hip goes to come forward, it has to pull the leg up out of the ground with it because you haven't gotten the leg in, tipped in towards center yet. So <clears throat> internal rotation of the rear leg happens when we throw. I will prove it to you. <clears throat> so there you roll off the side of your foot and your leg rotates internally because now your knee is pointed down. So instead of waiting for your hip to pull that leg out of the ground, we want to get your leg in a position where it's already out of the way. So your hip doesn't have as much work to do, right? So that's kind of a complex idea. So I will pause here and we can demo that for you. And we need to demo the the hip change too. Let me make a note of that. Uh, um, I'm going to go over. I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Oi, got to take more notes. Um, so hip drift, we're going to do. And the other thing was something I'll remember if I watch it again, hopefully. Yeah, rear leg anchor. Got it. Yeah, 
so preloading internal rotation. Preloading internal rotation. What the heck does that mean? Nobody knows. Okay. Um, so let's do the easy one first. Um, hip drift. So you're, I really like your X step. That's not something I get to say very often because most people are like, oh, X step, cool. I know how to X step. No. You're not doing that. That's awesome. You're keeping it nice and small. You're keeping your foot relatively neutral. You're not turning a ton. Um, when you take a small X step, there's no reason for your X step to turn toes backwards. So that's groovy. Small X. Um, but what you're doing is you're leaving this foot here as you start to shift your weight. And then you end up like here where you've shifted your center of gravity forward. And then this leg getting into position is late and you end up short leg, long leg. So at this point, this is anchored. It's stuck. It can't really internally rotate and get out of the way like it needs to. So when my hip goes to come around, my leg has to do a, a scoop, <clears throat> which looks like the same scoop that all the pros do, <clears throat> but it's, it's the timing is backwards. So the way you do it, your hip is moving forward. And when your hip moves forward, you, at some point you max out and you have to internally rotate. So internal rotation, external rotation. So I can't thrust my hip forward without internally rotating. So this has to happen. The knee has to come in so that there's room for the glute to fire and extend the hip. Not that the glute really has to fire a lot, but, but there needs to be room. The weight of the leg needs to be tucked in and out of the way so that when the brace leg fires and pushes the front hip backwards, there's room for this joint to come forwards, right? Because this one's going back, this one's going forwards. So what you do is you kind of get too far here open and then this rotation can't happen quickly. So what we want <clears throat> is um, the back hip to do its job, which is very simple. It's not a big, explosive, powerful movement. It's just driving you into your brace. Linear, no rotation. The knee dips in just to make space for the femur and the hip to rotate. Um, <clears throat> then the front leg opposes that, but not directly. It's offset. So that what you get is your rear hip is pushing, your front hip is pushing backwards. So if the rear hip goes, the ball spins a little bit, right? If the rear hip goes and the front hip limits and pulls back, then you get a ton of spin, right? That's what we're going for. We don't want this to be our power source and have a big, long rotation. We want this to set up a linear vector this way that's then caught and we have another linear vector opposed but not equal, not, not aligned, I guess. So I'm, I'm going this way because of this hip and then boom, they get push-pull switched on the spot so the hip rotation happens not from here to here where I can't possibly time anything, right? Because there's a huge window. But if everything happens right here, if all my hip rotation happens here, then I have a stable base and everything's upright and controlled and it's all rotating on the spot. So I get a quick rotation, which allows me to have the hips moving. And then I pull with my core muscles, I undo the coil in my spine to make the shoulders move and then I keep an active right shoulder to keep a deep pocket so there's three layers the hips go because of the footwork 
the shoulders go because of core muscle contraction, right? Getting back to center. And then the elbow goes because I'm going from this position to this position. So I'm going from a reach back where my arm is open and my eyes are on a point right about there off arm and I drive through not to here but to here so it should look like that and then the throw happens and your follow through brings your head back up that's a lot go back watch that a few times take notes there's a lot of stuff there um, so that's we jumped around a little bit <laughs> let's, let's go back and get both of those again um, so the, the preloading thing, I think, I think I got that all right. You just need a tip in. So look at all the pros and they all, they're all in this position where the knees are in a little bit. It doesn't have to be a ton, but <clears throat> this knee being in means you're getting your weight down into the heel. This knee being in means there's room for this hip to come forward while this hip goes backwards. So that's, that's all that needs to change here. So that's step one. Step two is you need your hips to not drift forward as quickly. So momentum step, initial step, X step. And then you want to stay here with everything in vertical alignment longer. So you need to slow your hips and your shoulders forward target word procession down. <clears throat> Too many words. Sorry. Slow down your hips and slow down how, how your spine moves forward, right? Because your spine is moving too quick. It's getting ahead of your foot. So here, maybe even with a little lean back, and then keep the weight here. So what I want it more to look like is you get to your X and you're hanging out on your X. You're hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, not really moving a whole lot. Shooting this foot ahead getting it toe down like you're doing, you have nice placement, just get that foot to the ground faster. So I don't want the foot to the ground here where my hips have already progressed past my X. I want it on the ground here because now when I shift my weight into that heel, I'm going to stay behind it. That's what allows me to give a little bit and then push the ground away and get the snappy hip rotation behind the brace that I want. So you're getting to here where the only way you can rotate is slowly because you've left the leg behind, right? I, there's, I can't go quick from there. If I shorten it up and get my weight more on the back leg and then transfer the weight into my heel by shifting linear, I have a bad habit when I'm demoing this of turning my hips as I go and that's not what you want because that's kind of a squish the bug thing where I am driving with this I just want to shift laterally with this and then find the amount of loading onto my front leg where it, it does give a little bit as in my knee bends but then the knee needs to straighten back out again to get me to pivot and stay behind the brace so behind the brace i mean my hips are here and my brace is there i am behind the brace um, so don't let your hips drift forward as much and make sure you are preloading the internal rotation of your rear leg so that it's not anchored and again another way to think about that is i want short leg long leg not long leg long leg short leg kind of confusing so get lower into your X step, right? Here, come down more and stay with the weight here. Then, then when you do shift, you're still gonna shift explosively, but you're gonna keep your weight back. Your pressure is still gonna go there. I'm still putting all of my force into the ground here because this foot jumps up for a second, but my weight's still back, right? My weight is not centered because by the time my weight is centered, I can't set up my brace right. And I'm going to end up here where my hips get too far on top of my brace and my shoulders get 
way too far past my brace. Okay, back to you. Make sure that all makes sense. <clears throat> So momentum step, initial step, X. So there, there you're in balance between both feet. And then by the time you shift, you're already like your butt is sticking out too much towards the target. So you're already like, you're already toppling this way. And we don't want to topple. We want to glide into the brace. So your, your front leg is late. It, it should be like out here already, given how far your hips are from your ground contact. So the, the easiest way to fix it is to make the hips slower and make the leg faster. So hips slow down, leg speeds up. Yeah, because so those frames there, you're just tipping. So look where you've set up. And then when you actually get braced, you're on a totally different line. So, so you, you, you can't have swing plane integrity because you're changing the angle that your body is on going into your brace. So you really want everything to stay vertical. So here's your spine at the X step. Here's your spine halfway to your plant. And here's your spine on the plane like you want to stay vertical let's see what you do like your spine looks good i think it's just that the it's a little lean back that's okay then you're pretty upright you're just letting the hips get too far ahead yeah okay so that's lower body um let me check my notes. Um, your elbow orientation and the flare is the next thing we're gonna look at. Long leg, short leg, hip drift, got it. Um, so another another way to look at this linguistically is it looks like you're falling off of your X step. So here's your X. And then like there it looks you're gonna fall this way, right? Because your your foot isn't out there yet. So your foot should be out making this long side of the triangle long side of the triangle uh, slightly exaggerated but but hopefully you get the point right you want to keep this one short and that one long um, and that's about all I had one other thing yeah so let's look at your shoulders too So your shoulders kind of, I mean, that's okay. They're, they kind of spill forward a little too much. Like your, your head is right over your foot. And I think that's the disc still on screen. But let's be fair and check where your spine is when you actually let go of the disc. And by let go, I mean it rips out. So this is why YouTube is cool because I can go frame by frame really easily and see where you actually are about. Yeah, so your head your head is too far forward. You really want your head to be, um, you want your leg angle to be more like maybe that. And your hips are here. And you want your head to be like there. You want your head like like over your knee, basically. So you're you're too far forward. Um, which means you're losing potential power in your rotation because your shoulders are tipping forward. So we're back to the back to the tipping thing again, right? Because so you started relatively vertical, 
with a little bit of a wing back, which is actually good. And then you're vertical when you come through center and then, then you're too far tipped this way. So you have, you have too much of this, which, you know, if you put a flat plane at any one of those points, it's, it's not consistent. So this is, is going to make it hard for you to control height, which is going to make everything hard. Right. So part of, Part of why footwork is so important is it, it sets up a consistent swing plane that's not got scoops and dips and flares and all sorts of stuff because that's that's what inconsistency comes from. Okay, so that's the lower body, deeper level mechanical stuff. Now let's look at the arm issue. So the arm issue is relatively simple to understand and very difficult to fix because the fix is putting your body in a very awkward position. Um, and then the even more annoying part than that is once you learn how to throw that way on a flat swing plane, you're then going to learn a more advanced maneuver and stop doing that. Um, but let's, let's just get step one for now. If you don't trust me, let me know. And I'm happy to explain the whole process to you. It's, I feel like I went over it in a video recently. Let's see if I can find that for you. So your elbow right here is, and, and you're not, you're not very far off base with this, but see how your elbow is lifting up to its final reach back position here. So your elbow is down to start and it lifts up. Then when your elbow bends again, the disc, the elbow goes down and the disc goes up. That's just a function of where you have put your elbow in space. So the elbow is going to go down and that's going to make the disc go up because they're connected by this grouping of bones. So then that momentum from the up continues to make the disc flare up more. And then you kind of start fixing it this is complicated by the shoulder poking out and your tipping thing. But you get it back to flat. So, like, you probably have a pretty functional throw. Looks like you know what you're doing. But you're losing efficiency and consistency because of the elbow orientation. Um, so let's flip back to demo mode. We'll grab a circle show up well enough no it doesn't there's a reason i always grab the bright green one um okay so uh look look at the video i did recently somewhat recently um how to fix a common rounding mistake i go over this in detail but basically because your reach back your elbow comes up that means when you bend your elbow is going to come down so when there's there's no way here for me to make bending my elbow make sense, given that I'm going to be rotating. I, I, I can't throw a disc like that, right? You're on maybe like, maybe this angle. So it's, it, it kind of makes sense. But when you drive your elbow forward, you're driving it down, which makes sense because that's a powerful muscle group, right? Our body wants to do that. But just because it's strong for the muscle doesn't mean it's strong for physics. So what physics wants is physics wants your elbow here, where when you bend your elbow, the disc doesn't go up. The disc just comes in to your right back. So it's, it's a matter of this versus this. So this is external rotation and this is internal rotation so you need more internal rotation in your shoulder in your upper arm um, your hand and wrist can do other things but the elbow orientation is still the same with my palm down my hand still comes into the chest my palm up and still comes into the chest this this one is awkward that's why people suitcase and then fix it at the last instant because it's more comfortable to be here this is awkward it puts a lot more tension in your elbow um, so people don't like to do it. 
So all you need is this plane to be consistent. So there's lots of drills about this. Box drill is about this. Trebuchet drill is about this. Um, lots of lots of good things going on. This is the key. Um, <laughs> I wasn't working. I wasn't even working with a guy. I was just talking with him, and uh, he was he was struggling to get any snap on his throws. Uh, he had a flexibility issue in his elbow, so he couldn't do this. So he got an idea, well, what if I throw upside down? Like, why not, right? <laughs> so he threw like this and got way better distance because it's easier with your palm down to get your elbow up. Here, it's pretty easy to be on a shoulder plane, right? Here, now there's all this tension and it's way easier for my body to say, I'd just rather pull through down here, right? Because that feels strong. So that's the biggest issue and and you you don't have a bad case of it like i see people go like this right where they're all the way up and then they go and like almost hit themselves like it's it's your body doing something that it knows is strong instead of understanding that good form happens up here at a basics level when you get more advanced you can get into kind of this where you still have a hyzer tilt because that's the best way for your hips to work. But you can reach back here and then throw with external rotation, managing your disc angle on your release. So you theoretically, you lose some power because you're not on this optimal swing plane, but you are able to harness more power from the hips on a hyzer tilt, so it ends up still being a net gain. That's the theory anyways. Okay, so that's a lot. Let's look at your second video. Um, I had it pulled up, there it is. Okay, so this one, we see a lot of the same things, um, but we see them from a different angle. So your weight shift looks a little funny. Uh, super nice field, by the way. Super cool to have a net. I'm jealous. So it looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Uh, now, uh-oh. So I can already tell you're committing your weight shift like too far towards your toe side. Um, not that like your foot placement ends up being bad. <clears throat> but your, your head is your shoulder is in the way of your disc, right? You've blocked your disc path forward by leaning forward so far. <clears throat> um, so, so this is kind of like a form of rounding, I guess. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> so it's, it's good that your spine is on a hyzer tilt. Not complaining about that. Um, but the way you're setting up your reach back position and your weight shift are not working um, because you're too you're too far towards the toe side so i'm going to demo a new reach back position for you and maybe keeping your spine a little more upright you, that is that's probably not necessary you're just shifting too far to your toe side, I think is the problem. Okay, back to me. <clears throat> so reach back position, we're gonna change. And um, yeah, we can look at three rails stuff too. Um, so this is, three rails is kind of an old model of the throw that I used to think was the way everything works. It's kind of based off of, um, Brian Earhart's footwork. <clears throat> um, look at his X step deep dive video to get on board with that. Um, but so you're you're shifting your weight all here, um, and that's that's a function of what we we're looking at on the other video of you're getting too far on top of the brace. 
remember, long leg, short leg, long leg in front. When my short leg is in front, then my weight is too far forward. So same thing from a back view. I don't want my head over this foot. I want my head centered. So the three rail stuff is about it at that time in my progression of understanding the throw and doing a throw. I was trying to keep my center of gravity on a third rail between my front rail, which is my initial step and my plant. So this rail is here. And then my X step, my momentum step and my X step are on the same rail. So, so like this, right? Your feet never cross. They always stay on the same line. And then I didn't want my weight to shift between the rails, right? I wanted my weight to stay on a third rail and just glide sideways. So if you continue that concept through to completion, you wouldn't weight shift onto the front rail. You'd weight shift target word, and that gets this rear leg to drift where we want it to. Um, it will also stop you from getting your head over your front foot, right? Because if I'm, so let's simplify and say that I'm pulling in a straight line. If I get my head over my front rail, then I have to round. It's, it's harder for me to drive the elbow out this way because my body's in the way. So weird things are going to happen. Not that I want to reach back like that. So what we're going to change is we're not going to get our weight all the way over here. Um, so from the side, we're not going to get our weight over the brace. And from the back, we're not going to get our weight over the brace. We're going to keep our weight more centered where there's still some space back. I mean, you can have a hyzer tilt if you have a counterweight, but this is a static demo, right? In a dynamic demo, you're actually gonna be more like here, but it's, I need to get footage of pros throwing and AB stuff. I think that would be more helpful than me trying to explain it. Um, reach back position. So maybe play with the spine a little more upright. That's probably not, uh, mess with that last. So first things to look at are keep the front leg long and then don't just don't commit your weight so much laterally, right? Keep it more towards the target. Um, and then the, but the most important thing we're going to change is your reach back position. So let's pop back to you for a second. So the thing that's annoying about shorts is I have to play the whole thing. I can't scrub on it. Sometimes there's a way to, but sometimes there isn't. So just looking at your peak reach back position and then what happens after reach back. There's your initial nice small X. Let the hips start to drift forward too much and sideways too much. So you're reaching, you're reaching back pretty straight maybe 10 degrees off the straight. Then as you continue to ground your front foot, the disc lifts up. That's related to the elbow thing. And then it's actually, I mean, that, it looks okay, but it, that's a lot of flare. Now it's going back down and then you level it out. Yeah, so we just, we just need to get that elbow up. Get that elbow up and fix the reach back position. <clears throat> so you're stepping out kind of far. You're putting the disc kind of straight. So here the disc doesn't have anywhere to go. That's not through me, right? So you're getting a little bit of flare up as your elbow drops. And then you're kind of coming back down and evening it out. So instead of that, we want the elbow to bend on the hyzer tilt we're throwing on. So go back and watch the two hyzer videos. Um, I don't remember what they're called. I'll get you links to them. I'll make a note of that. Hyzer vids times two. Um, go watch those. It's a lot of 
like this stuff. Um, point being your rear leg is a counterweight for your hyzer tilt. Because if I try to throw a hyzer here, right, it's never going to work because I'm going to set up a line. And then when I try to move dynamically from this static position, my body's going to say, no, you're going to fall over, stop it, and it's going to stand me up. So my hyzer is going to go from here to here. So whatever angle I set up on, if I'm trying to throw on a 45, I'm actually going to throw on a 25. And that's not good, right? But the way that you get down on your hyzer and stay there is a counterweight. So if I have a line from my head through my rear leg, now I can throw dynamically and keep that angle integrity and not have to pop up. So that's what those videos are all about. Go watch those ones. Um, but the reach back position, get it out. So from here, it's a lot easier to drive my elbow forward. My elbow is going to go from here to a deep pocket position. So here, boom, deep pocket, meaning disc touching right pec, barely. That's the difference, right? I can't do that if I have my elbow set up here because I can't, right? This is not the same as this. So you need your elbow poking out in front. You need the disc by your right pec. And the way you get there is changing the reach back position. If I start from here, it's a lot harder because now my my shoulder and my upper arm are at a 90 degree angle. And by the time my shoulders start moving forward, I've collapsed, right? So you're, you're probably doing a mix of that and a mix of having this too low. So preserve this space here. This, this openness of this joint is key and you want to keep it by keeping it by doing this, right? So it's, it's not starting a lawnmower. It's preserving the space here in this joint and getting the elbow forward and having the elbow hinge on the plane. So those are the things that I see. Um, hopefully that is all super clear. If not, please ask questions and I can get back to you with some more details. Uh, thank you very much and good luck, sir.